Well, I'm super late. Again. But dude, it's Christopher Nolan. There's no way I'm missing out on this movie discussion. Isn't that right, Matthew McConaughey? Mm-hmm. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to Film With Fire! And today we talk about the movie that shot up to number 13 on the IMDb movie ranking list in less than a month. Holy sh**. Interstellar is directed by Christopher Nolan, but of course you probably already knew that. It's a movie that takes place in a future where Earth's natural resources have essentially gone to sh**. With more and more people struggling for food. But when an opportunity to go beyond our galaxy through interstellar space travels discovered, Cooper, played by Matthew McConaughey, makes the desperate decision to go into interstellar space and find an inhabitable planet for the future of his family and possibly the entire human race. Now just to clarify for the internet people out there, I am not a crazy Nolan fanboy. Yes, I do think he is one of the best directors working today. His work is extremely intelligent, creative, suspenseful. But I try not to take part in the hype because let's face it, the hype for this movie was insane. Some people wanted it to be the next 2001 Space Odyssey, while others were expecting their minds to be blown like an in inception. But me, I didn't care. I just wanted to sit down, relax, and watch an epic space voyage with great acting and emotional drama. And that's exactly what I got. Interstellar is a great film. Not the most perfect thing in the world, but still excellent. There are too many complaints online from people who saw the name Christopher Nolan, probably got super excited, and decided to build a whole wall of impossible expectations. Like how every teenager did for The Dark Knight Rises. Guess what, kids? If you want to actually enjoy life, you don't do sh like that. Okay, I'm gonna stop ranting, sorry about that. One of the great things about Interstellar is the initial narrative setup. The whole setting with Cooper and his family was just so emotionally engrossing. Through casual action and dialogue alone, you learn a lot about the main character, his daughter, and the economically f***ed up world they live in all in the first 20 minutes. And for the rest of the movie, I actually really cared for Matthew McConaughey's character. You can really see his personality and the incredibly tough decisions he has to make between saving humanity and his responsibilities as a father. Because Cooper isn't portrayed as the typical hero, he is a human being with semi-depressed feelings. Strong feelings that at times can affect his judgment, while other times serve as motivation and courage to overcome dangerous obstacles. This deep level of understanding for the protagonist would have not been accomplished without some great writing and a stunning performance by Matthew McConaughey. And his daughter Murph is fantastic too. Mackenzie Foy is only 14 years old, but wow, she was really good in this movie. My theater was noisy and packed, but whenever Murph or Cooper started crying, everyone went silent. If an actor can get a room full of teenagers and young adults to shut up for an entire scene, he's probably really good. <laughs> I kind of just dissed myself and everyone in my age group. As for the space voyage itself, I chose a really bad time to film this. Sorry guys, I have to go somewhere. I will be right back to finish this review in just a moment. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay then, we are back. So where did I leave off yesterday? The space voyage is beautiful. The CGI is just so well done. There are times when the CGI is just totally unnoticeable, like the solar effects are just blending in with the environment naturally as if you're watching real space footage. And the music by Hans Zimmer just fits in perfectly. It has this very interesting vibe that's sort of uplifting but dramatic at the same time. And sometimes kind of romantic. Yes, romantic. That's something you should take note of. I didn't really see the movie as a sci-fi thriller like Gravity. It was more like a drama that takes place in space and uses sci-fi elements to help build up the story. Granted, the space voyage is epic. There are scenes that are just purely jaw-dropping, but I don't really feel like the epic scale of the journey itself is really the main focus here. Because the movie tends to switch focuses between Cooper and Murph on a very frequent basis, which can be a good and bad thing because you really do care about Cooper's family, 
while at the same time, you don't really have as much development for people like Anna Hathaway's character. Even though she does a really good job acting and supposedly spends more time with Cooper than Murph actually does. One moment that kind of bugged me was when there was a conflict in space and a conflict on Earth happening at the same time. If you're into film editing like me and have watched a lot of Christopher Nolan films, you'll probably notice that cross-cutting is a crucial part of his directing style. Switching back and forth between action scenes that occur simultaneously, usually building more and more suspense on top of each other. Which works extraordinarily well in movies like Inception and The Dark Knight, but maybe not as much here. I just couldn't really see the connection between these two particular scenes and why parallel editing was required in that instance. One issue I've heard a lot of critics complain about is the ending. In fact, I had a friend who was very looking forward to this movie. He told me he was disappointed with the twist because he totally saw it coming. I beg to differ though, there's nothing really wrong with the twist even if it is considerably predictable. Because if you think about it, it ties in with the movie's themes about love, the purpose of existence, what humanity is fighting for really really well. So personally, it wasn't really the twist that bugged me, it was how the ending just dragged out. This movie is 3 hours long, so when you finally reach the conclusion, there's a scene where I'm just thinking, the end. Except at that moment the movie adds a question mark to my statement and goes on for another 10 minutes. And because I didn't really care as much for a particular character, I felt like those last 10 minutes were a bit unnecessary. Criticism aside though, you really do have to praise Mr. Nolan for his dedication. You can tell the director had so much passion for this project. The space shuttle shooting into the unknown was like a metaphor for Nolan boldly exploring a completely different genre, with his own creative vision and personal goals as a filmmaker set. Yes, the film may arguably have some script issues, but there was still so much that was great about it, and parts that at least hinted at greatness. The movie was emotionally compelling at times, jaw-dropping at other times, and there's a really cool robot and a special guest actor you'll meet. I had a very fun time in this surprisingly different sci-fi experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Interstellar is... Exquisite out of 10. So what is your favorite movie directed by Christopher Nolan? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if there's another movie you want me to review, and I've seen a lot this year, trust me, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next.